Well, uh, just to mention this morning, it's not all the subject. Um, someone, I won't mention the preacher's name, talked about the kings of the east, the kings of the south, you know, the kings of the east being China, king, uh, kings of the south being Islam, the... Uh, <clears throat> I forgot their names, uh, Moshek or and and Rushek. I forgot their names again. I should have looked it up, but it wasn't uh, at the me uh, the prime thing that I was going to talk about being Russia and the King of the West being the United States of America, and that <clears throat> all this basically is coming down to taking over land from the Jews which uh, he would say is Israel, this deceiver. And that we're all going over, they're going to take that because Rush, uh, Israel has discovered, it isn't out, it isn't being broadcast yet, but for over 100 years they're going to have, they have discovered that they were enough gases. They could do that in, in, uh, in the uh, Arab countries, all of them, Right? All of them. Where is all this wealth that this preacher is talking about for the old Jerusalem? The Bible talks about the new Jerusalem, and we are the new Jerusalem. We're not the old Jerusalem. We're not the land that Jesus had went for. And our forefathers did print the Bible. Uh, they gave us the word of God. And uh, there are other, many other things I could talk about in this area, but I wanted to mention it to you. I'm just, oh, and the big rapture is going to come escape, they're going to escape the, through this rapture, was the other thing that he talked about. So let's be very careful, my friends, what we believe. Right? It really, it really does matter. And if these people, again, of the old Jerusalem, and they're over here <laughs> by the masses doing their uh, ungodly deeds, uh, the corruption that's coming forth for them, and, and it's not talk about corruption. We, this minister could have talked about the corruption that the, the uh, Jews are doing to us today. Couldn't he? He could talk about the Federal Reserve. He could talk about Hollywood. He could talk about pornogra pornography. He could talk about all kinds of different areas, and our government is full of them. I hate to say it, but our present, our present, um, uh, uh, well, Trump, he had Jews behind him, did he not? He had Jews in his family. He had Jewish counselors. And uh, I haven't seen any. I haven't seen anybody arrested yet. I haven't seen like they're saying uh, Bill Clinton's uh, head chopped off, or that he's in various reports, different ones, or he's in Gitmo be under arrest. Just like uh, Nancy Pelosi, they said was under house arrest. Yet yeah, she's walking around doing what she wants to. I don't know. But here's what I will say. Biden and, let's talk about Biden and uh, Harris and Pelosi. We just use them as an example. Do we have problems from them, th those of their type? Uh, or do we have demons that are the problem? I want to talk to you this morning about the subject matter called Evil Spirits, Part 1. Evil Spirits, Part 1. Now, I'm not going to cover the whole issue of evil spirits, uh, and I'm not going to be able to convince everybody. Everybody is minds made up on that. You know, if they're going to be in the, with the evil spirits, they're going to be in with the evil spirits and what the evil spirits are doing to us and how evil spirits are possessing us. I want to say... Uh, Casting out spirits, well, we ought to be able to go to Joe Biden uh, and uh, Harris and Pelosi and those of their type and cast the devil out of them. 
Am I right or am I right? And then they will, will, they will be free of these devils, which I've said before. So we're going to get into it this morning somewhat on, on this issue. Uh, some things we will not be able to cover, but uh, we need to. If we're going to force any one of anything, let's enforce the Word of God, so to speak, by the holy power of the Holy Spirit. I want truth to be opened up to people. Under Biden and Harris and those types, do you think they're going to open up truth to you and that you're, they're going to allow you to be free thinkers? What, what have they allowed for the last four years under Trump? No, is there been any freedom and liberty that they, they wanted to impeach him and stuff like that? So although tr Trump, in my mind, is not perfect, I've said that before, I still support him in many ways, and he has given me reason to be proud of him. He has caused me to scratch my head over a few things. I'm sure he's asked, caused you to scratch your head over a few things. But if you think that Biden and Harris are going to be good for this nation and open up freedom and, and free thinking and liberty, I have to mention the other night, it was so funny to me. Did you see it in Portland, Oregon, where the Antiva went out and started rioting and setting fires and doing all these other things under Biden? Under, under Biden. And these 30,000 troops they talk about, I have to mention it again, they're all just, they weren't serious about their job. They're just drawing a paycheck. It's a theater. This whole inauguration was a theater in many, many ways. This um, White House occupancy is a theater also. I won't go into all of it because you know, there's different talk about you know, the corporation and uh, Biden's part of that corporation and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, I understand that. Um, we want freedom. We want liberty. Does my is my question is does Trump know about enough about freedom and liberty? Even at this day, we could say, well, yes, he does. I'm I'm questioning that with what he um, several things that have had, we've had to go through. For instance, I am um, I wonder about uh, what was this guy's name that's under in under arrest in England. Uh, uh, Julia Assange. Why didn't the president pardon him? Yeah, he, he did that. You know, and so, so my, I'm not saying everything's going as I predict, but I'm telling you right now, I question some things. He was threatened by the Senate. We don't have all the details. Yeah, we don't have, we, we just, yeah. We don't have that detail. We have lots of rumors and propaganda going on out there right now. But um, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Matthew twelve fourteen. Now, we're going to read a lot of verses here. It's where we're mainly going to be, but I want you to kind of batten down the hatches. It, you know, don't get all freaked out. I'm not going to get all spooky on you, I don't think. Uh, when, when, but let's read this. This is... Um, uh, this will be Matthew 12, 14. We're starting there. Quote, Then the Pharisees went out and held a council against him. How they might, what? Destroy him. Meaning Jesus Christ, right? I find that very interesting. I don't know what you may think about it. But I find this, these words very interesting. How the Pharisees went out and held counsel against him that they might destroy him. Wait a minute, I thought the demons were supposed to do things like this, probably. Yeah, people say, well, they're full of the devil. 
Yeah, I understand that argument. I, I do. But it says the Pharisees. Does it say they were full of the devil? Did Jesus come and cast the devil out of them or anything like that, I wonder? They counseled against Jesus, how they might destroy him. Wouldn't you call a council like this one spirits? How about uh, a gathering of spirits, this council that was formed here by the Pharisees? They had an evil intent and purpose. Would you not say so? Because they were out to what? Destroy Jesus. Don't you think they're out to destroy uh, Trump again? Don't you think they're out to destroy the president? By the way, do you think these Pharisees are still alive today under various different names? Well, we talked about that earlier, MK, how they changed the language, and uh, especially the pharmaceutical and the medical field, and they uh, use it French terms and Latin terms and things like that to confuse people and make you go to their gods and ask them, the doctors, to ask these counselors, these psychologists and physicians and other places, people like that, so you'll know how smart these people are and how dumb you are? I don't think you people are dumb at all. Should we learn their language? Well, yeah, I can see partial need in it, but we don't need to learn their language. We don't need their pharmacia. We don't need their vaccination, amen, and what they're doing there. So I thought about this, and I thought about what's happening today, and I thought, you know what? These Pharisees are like uh, Harris and Biden and a bunch of others that I won't even mention right now. Isn't this what they were out doing? And this is, isn't, that, isn't that what Harris and Biden and, and their whole administration is out to do today? They're gathered with an evil spirit, an evil counsel. Well, let's look on. Verse 15. But when Jesus knew it. He withdrew himself from thence, and great multitudes followed him. And he, he healed them, and he charged them that they should not make him known. Wow, that's really interesting, that they should not make him known. We don't know fully what that means. Most of us believe, of course, it means we're, what's his hereabouts? What's he doing? What's he up to? You know, Jesus said, it won't do any, uh, I want you to keep this from them. And I want you to keep this from them because, well, for one thing, they're out to destroy me, right? You think they're out to destroy people today, too, various ones of us. Well, I believe God can protect us. God's sovereign. But these, this pharisaical council tried to do him harm. And Jesus goes off and he does what? Well, you know, there's a lot of things we could think of that he might have gone off and done. But he goes off and he does what? He heals people. And he charged the people that they should make his appearance or place of his gathering hidden, didn't he? And they should, meaning these Pharisees, that they should know where I'm at or what I'm up to. I'm doing my father's business. That's what I'm up to. So I'm going to ask a question here, Why? Because Jesus knew that the Pharisees, again, were out to destroy him. He was interfering in there, these Pharisees' corrupt religion. He was exposing much. He was stepping on their feet and their schemes and their purposes and their plots. Jesus was a danger to these Pharisees, was he not? 
And again, they're still among us today, these Pharisees. They hate us. They're out to destroy us, just like Harris and Biden are doing today, and others. They're out to destroy us. <clears throat> Some think that, again, just today, I talked about it, how the, that the rapture, they're going to escape in the rapture. <laughs> well, uh, good luck with that one, if that's your belief. But his work, Jesus' work, was not complete. So he had to work in such a way that we could say that it was hidden because the enemy, again, is out to get him and shut him down. I will say again, the enemy is out there to shut us down, to shut people like us down, especially if you have the truth. The enemy isn't going to like you very much. And we know, I have to mention again, there, there's people, when it, you, you're dealing with the Republicans and you're dealing with the Democrats, many of them are one and the same, are they not, ladies and gentlemen? And they have these Republicans or Repub uh, uh, rhinos that have gone against Trump and him and uh everything that he's been about and done. We know about the uh, this uh, pipeline. Biden went against that, voted against it. I think it's funny because Canada, the prime minister, was using that pipeline, hoping on that pipeline, depending on that pipeline, bringing lots of extra money. Now it's gone. The enemy's doing something, many things today. You know what they're also doing, I have to mention, they're gathering evidence. They're using uh, these high-tech places like, again, Facebook, Twitter, Google, and others. But you know what they're also using? They're using, don't forget, the Southern Poverty Law Association. Are they a law association? Are they connected with the law? Are they being paid by the law? Oh, we're the law association. And you know what? They're being used by the these crooked uh, FBI, CIA, uh, various police forces, lifting them up because oh, they're law enforcement agent just like we are. What are they doing? The Southern Poverty Law Association and the ADL. They're lying, right? They have a, their, their whole unit is built upon you get people giving them money and them uh, using these so-called funds to legitimize themselves. I find that horrible, disdainful. And they're so, one of the ones that need to go down in this nation. And yet, um, I hate to say it, but our president depends on the Southern Poverty Law Association, this last president, Trump, depended on them. Biden, Biden will totally depend upon them. Biden will do that. And the ADL. Uh, I'm not saying a lot of these things for people to get scared. Because I worry about that. In that, oh, you can't tell people too much because they'll go in hiding all the time. Like I said last week. Yeah, we do need to go in for a time of hiding, perhaps. But let's have faith in God. Let's be bold Christians. Well, did the Apostle Paul hide? I just want to ask. Let's just take him for example. Did he hide? Oh, but they killed him in the end. Yeah, they may have, they may, you know, we're all going to die. Do you think about the ones that cow were cowards? And I'm talking about cowards now. Do you think about the cowards? Do you lift them up or do you love and lift up real true heroes that stand up to tyranny and injustice? I do. Do you want those kind of men 
to lift up those kind of men? Yes, we do. So let's be careful in how we interpret things and the direction that we are necessarily going to go. Because there's a lot of people today, a lot of people that want to go in hiding for various reasons. Or they're not. They want to believe and they want to talk about the worst. Hey, we can talk about the bad things, but let's also talk about things that God can do. Our God is able to deliver us. Amen? Amen. So uh, let's go on in verse 17. That it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold, my servant whom I have, have beloved, this is Israel, or we could say at that time the, the, the Jews, <laughs> sorry, the, the Judeans. Yeah, the true Judeans of, the, of, the, of Israel. Because uh, at one time, they were what? They were all that's left of Israel. Amen? Yeah. They were all that was left of Israel. You had the other ten tribes that had gone off the lost ten tribes into dispersion. The Bible call, says that about their, about their travelings. Was God in charge of that, I wonder, folks? He bet he was. Did things look bad? Did they go through hardships? Did they die? Yeah. You know, we're going through the same thing today. We're going through various types of hardships, and we die. Various ones have died. Have they not? Some great men. I listened to them in my last newsletter, just those preachers. A lot of them, they all died in the faith. They all kept the faith. Amen. Going on, quote, In whom my soul is well pleased, I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. Again, those of the, let's say, lost sheep of the house of Israel. Amen? He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. You know, this is, the next words are kind of confusing. What do they mean exactly? I don't know exactly what they mean. I'm sure a few of you do out there. But it says, a bruised reed shall not break. And smoking flax shall he not quench. You know, a reed sh shall he not break. Uh, that reminds me of a sparrow. He knows the hairs of our head even and things like that. Uh, these various things that can be destroyed by man. And, and there are many examples we could give. Uh, God's going, uh, knows about it. God can protect them. But it says, Till he send forth judgment unto victory. Wow, I read that and I thought, man. Send forth judgment to victory. What do you think that means? What are these verses telling us, ladies and gentlemen? They are telling us that for the most part, Yahweh is going to remain what? Mostly silent. He's not going to make a lot of noise until what? Until what? Until he sends victory. Until he brings forth judgment unto victory. Is God bringing forth judgment now? Can he bring forth judgment to victory? Amen, he can. Hallelujah. Our King, the Lord Jesus Christ, can do this, can he not? And I am going to tell you again, like I talked about at the beginning of this message on uh, the kings of the East and West, and, you know, we're the kings of the West, let's say. I, I agree with that. Um, 
God's going to do some marvelous things with this new Jerusalem. Have you noticed many of the places are, are called after, uh, you know, like Zion and, and other place, uh, various places like that. They use Bible names and terms. They're all throughout this nation. The Bible, signs of, of that we are Israel is all over this nation. And yet we have let the enemy in like the parables of the kingdom say. There's very, lots of various ones. And you, a lot of times people, again, will, I will mention, like to look at those and think, oh, they're all wonderful. No, they talk about some really bad, hard things that Israel's going to have to go through. Amen? Amen? But then victory. Uh, and uh, I want you all to listen to this again. He shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. What does that sound like? That he's going to be silent. Does it sound like that to you? It sounds like that to me. Until when again? Until he brings forth judgment unto victory. And I'd say that's the way he's going to do it. I've read those verses over many times, and I've skipped over that and not seen the deeper meaning in it, but it was there. It was there all along, waiting for huh, us to wake up and to hear what he's going to do. Look at, on in verse 21. And in his name shall the Gentiles, the lost tribes of Israel, trust then was brought unto him one possessed with a devil, blind and dumb. And he healed him in so much that the blind men and the dumb both saw and uh, spake and saw. What did Jesus do here? He healed the blind men. Hmm. Blind and dumb, it says. That they what? They both spake and saw. You know, you think about a pair, for instance. In this talking about a pair that we, our eyes that we can see. Um, and when a person's dumb, isn't that up here with their mouth? And the, way, and the way they speak. Well, we can see signs of that today and types of that today. We could look at uh, and say, boy, this sure, you know, uh, we're getting types and shadows and things like that today with the blind. And we know that the blind are leading the blind, as I went over some weeks back. Don't we? Uh and I don't care how many, what ratio, what polls you want to use right now on the um, voting thing. But I can guarantee you there's still a lot of dumb people out there. You think this might apply to that? Or people they can't see. It's like that day, I, I'll say it again, when I was with this 70-something-year-old uh, lady who was bringing up the virtues of uh, Biden and how bad the white man is and the white race and what we did to the black race and, and slavery and all this other stuff she was and she calls herself a Christian would call herself a, do you think there's others like that out there I can assure you there are do you think there's a lot like that out as an example in California and Oregon and Washington State I know the Voting was corrupt. I know they uh, slept a lot of things through on people. But even way before this, uh, last four years, wasn't Washington corrupt? Wasn't California corrupt? And we kept saying, can't these people see what's going on in California? Eight, ten. What about the years of, of um, Obama? 
voting in Obama? Give me a break. He's their great hero, huh? But Jesus had power, it says, over sickness. And he does. And disrupt uh, this uh, disruptive things that go on in our nervous system from eating wrong or uh, bad living. Do you think there were drugs back then? Sure there were. There were drugs back then. I mean, why do you think it talks about getting, for example, getting drunk? You know, things like that went on, right? It went on for a long time. It's been here since the beginning. Mental disorders, bad habits, and behavior. Look on verse 30, 23. <clears throat> and all the people were amazed and said, Is not this the... the is not this the son of David? Well, I wonder about that. I think they knew it was the son of David. And they weren't they saying to themselves, Is not this the son of David? Amen? I believe that's what was going on here. How else would they have said that? Why else would they have said that? This is, the, is not this the son of David? It talks about the son of David in the Bible throughout. And they were amazed at what Jesus did. But the next verse, when the Pharisees heard it, they said, This fellow doth not cast, doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Hmm. Now, we've all heard that, haven't we? We've all read that. we all had various thoughts and comments on that. And I'm not saying what I'm telling you this morning is the gospel truth. Amen? I'm not a false prophet. I don't know. But I, my opinion is, I wonder, could Beelzebub also, might that be the name of a Pharisaical high priest at that time? I don't know. <coughs> I'm free to think. I'm free to ask questions. I'm free to read God's word. Don't we have presidents? Don't we have counselors? Don't we have judges? I would say they act like Beelzebub too. Wouldn't you? So, um, and they all claim power. For whatever reason. A bigger devil, perhaps? I'm asking some questions here. Beelzebub. Could he have been this big adversary with lots of power? I mean, he could kill you. He could throw you in jail. He could, he could force you down and stick you with the va this vaccination, right? He has lots of power. He claims more power over things than anyone else. Do we have these types of devils today? Are we, should we fear the devils more than those types of people? Just asking some questions. Do you sit around and fear um, these Judeo-Christian types of devils, these invisible devils, or do we fit more? Should we fear more the real devils, like Harris and Biden and Pelosi and Hillary and Bill Gates? Should we fear these real devils? Where did they get their thinking? Where did they get? How did they become devils? From universities, from the Kabbalah, from false books, false educations. This lady I was talking about, she was so proud that she got her Berkeley education, liberal education, and she was all for it. All for it. Who do you fear? Who do you think we ought to fear? Again, may I say, if they're 
invisible, real devils as the Judeo-Christians believe, then we ought to go casting the devils out of these devils today. These adversaries today like Harris and Biden and Pelosi and blah, blah, blah. We should go cast the devil out of the Federal Reserve. Clean that up in the IRS, right? Amen? And that'd be just be a, only a good start, right? We need more. We need to go on more. Casting the devil out. Well, I want to ask, how did they get the devil in them in the first place, this so-called devil? Where did these this so-called devils come from? I'm asking some questions. We have liars and deceivers today. And some of them are bigger than others, are they not? What about these big liars and deceivers? The ones that are out for power. Hmm. Look on verse 25. Because they're producing victims today, make no mistake about it. They call us subjects, right? When these police officers pull you over, the, you know, the, the subject is pulled over. You know, we're their subject. We could go on about that, but I'll not. What are we, but what are we really? The downtrodden? Verse 25, and Jesus knew their thoughts. Make no mistake about that. Jesus knew their thoughts. He could read their minds quite easily. But he wanted for his purposes to go on out of the area and to hide himself or make himself not known to them what they were doing because he didn't want, he's, he wouldn't, his time wasn't ready yet, okay? So he wanted to move out of there. And he said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Every kingdom divided against itself? I had to think about that. And you should too. I'll talk about that in just a minute. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. And if Satan cast out Satan, he is what? Divided against himself. How shall then his kingdom stand? Have you ever noticed how together, united, the uh, Democrats were the, over the last four years? Over the last four years? I know they were divi uh, not divided before that, but on a lot of cases too, but they really showed it. They hated our president. They wanted to impeach him. They wanted to get rid of him, right? And they're going after you and I and him as well. Give them time. They've just started the program or the ball rolling. Amen. But you know, I had to think about this on this dividing aspect. How much power, physical power, will say the Democrats gain by being united? And this is what this verse is telling us. Shouldn't we be united then? Would it be smart for Christians to be united? Now, I know there are a lot of doctrines going on today. We talked about them today. But we should be united on the main ones, on what the Bible declares, amen? There should, we should all be united on that. Don't let the enemy divide you, because that is one of their um, magical tricks, I call it. You could call it something else. I'll, I'll call it Kabbalah. That's what they use for their favor against us. And many of us, because our white people are not reading the Bible the way that they should, or being used, they're, they're gullible. Let's not be used. The enemy is causing confusion, deceit, and lies, creating more and more victims and 
wrong thinking people. Well, can we not say we can certainly see that today? People who do not read the Bible again. God's word. People who do not pray. People who do not have peace of mind. Do you think people may not have peace of mind today? I can guarantee you they do. There's probably some in this audience today. I won't name any names. I'm not pointing out anybody, but there's probably some people that don't. You just don't have peace of mind. Well, I'd hope you get it. We need to be united in this church, if no one else. This body needs to be united on the main things, on, the, on main Bible doctrines and issues. We need to be united, a united front. Verse 27. But if I by Beelzebub cast out devils or adversary, it literally means adversary. Okay? By whom do your children cast them out? Therefore, they shall be your judges. Hmm. I know they shall be judges. Yeah. Uh, I've thought, I, I see what it says here. But, in a way, are not children and young people being our judges today? Yes. Look at what's happening in these riots and Antiva and BLM and blah, 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 blah. And where did they get their thinking and this so-called education that they have? From the universities and other places. And they want, they want to have power over you and I. They think they have this power over our Christian faith. They're going after your Christian faith today. It's coming. They're going after uh, those that will not comply and do the things that they say you should do. If you're a praying church, they're coming after you. If you're a Bible-believing church, they're going to come after you. Now, God can protect us. God can deliver us. God can save us. God can put a hedge of protection. for Give it to us and help us in so many ways, and he can do that. So do not forget that. I don't want you to dwell on fear and negativity. I do want you to be aware of what the enemy is going to be doing, though. Not to just us. I'm not talking about us. I'm talking about to a lot of other churches out there. That this is going to go on. Verse 25. Um, but if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is come unto you. Whoa. Whoa. If I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is coming to you. First of all, I want to ask, are we in the kingdom now? I've done sermons on that. I've showed that we are in the kingdom now. It isn't a perfected kingdom. We still have many trials and tribulations and things that have to be cleaned up. But we're in the kingdom now. Well, if we're in the kingdom now, that must mean a lot of things apply. Well, this applies. If, you, if you're able to cast out these devils, then the kingdom is coming to you. But I wonder again, what does it mean by these devils? What does it mean by these adversaries? Question, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not giving all the answers because I don't have all the answers again. I'm just asking some questions mainly today. Casting out the Judeo-Christian devils. Hmm. Or these real adversaries again, these real enemies that we have in our land today and all over the place. You think they're just here? No, they jet setters, they fly around to all these conferences and Bilderberger meetings and things like that. Do they not? You think they're out planning the kingdom of God for you? Do we simply have to cast out devils is my question. 
Do we simply have to cast out devils? Well, if we do, then let's go cast them out. I mean, let me know what you people think right now. You think that's a good question? You think that's a reasonable question? If the Judeo-Christian devil exists the way that they are say that he does, shouldn't we just go cast him out and we'll be free and have liberty and freedom and the Bible will come alive? I ask you. Or the real culprits. Or the real culprits, these adversaries. Corrupt politicians. Corrupt judges. Corrupt doctors, corrupt pharmacia, are they what you are really, we are really having to deal with? Don't we talk about them all the time? I don't think we've ever come here and said, oh, we got to cast out the devils. Oh, we're, we're, we're really uh, uh, plagued by these invisible devils today. Now, I know the other churches out there aren't going to tell you that. I have people within my, our own movement that are, oh, they'll come strongly out against what this sermon is and the things that I've been talking about here. And they'll say, no, these devils are real. These, these devils with uh, scales on them. I've seen the Queen of England. I've seen pictures, and she's transformed into this lizard-like, oh, and she's evil. The Queen of England? You're worried about some Queen of England? Oh, there's others of them. And I've seen these aliens on the ground. They just, you know, they have tremendous power. Oh, my God. I know, I noticed that. I, I, I you know, I, forgive me. You know, I, I should mention that every time we come together, we're in fear of those uh, aliens from outer space and these demons. And we could go on and on and on. No, I'm more worried about uh, these corrupt judges. These corrupt politicians and and people like that that I can see. I'm 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 more worried about what uh, Bill Gates and Fauci has planned, aren't you? I've heard you too much. I know that. I know what you're really thinking. Verse twenty nine. By the way, I just have to. And these devils were all, every night on the media telling you how to think and what to do and other things like that. Ah, oh, boy. Verse 29. Or else how can anyone enter into a strong man's house? Oh, my, I love these, this verse. Don't y'all? Oh, you know where I'm going here. How can anyone enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods Except he first bind the strong man, this bad guy, binds the strong man, and then he will spoil the, his house. Oh, but I forgot it says a devil here. Does it say devil to you in your translation? Is there really, is there, shouldn't I have told that, us this? In verse 29, if that's really the problem. Because we haven't got out of Matthew here, what we're reading. I'm just asking some questions mainly in this. Or real men. Do devils, the so-called invisible devils types out there, do what these verses just spoke to us about? Or are they these um, spoilers? They come in. Do we, we have spoilers in our government? Yeah, I think we do. Do we have spoilers in religion? I think we do. Do most of them, and did not most of them, speak against God's law? And what tragic effects has that happened upon our nation today because they won't stress God's law, read God's law, discuss God's law, help God? Uh, given people an understanding of the various laws and their applications and what sin is. What is sin, by the way? Sin is transgression of God's law. Amen? 
And who gives us this? Who puts forth this idea of transgression of God's law? Well, these devils are. These adversaries. And don't we have many antichrists, many adversaries today? We sure do. Huh. What does that mean? Exactly what I said. You, you can't... How do you cast devils out of evil people? Oh, they yeah. Born that way. Yeah. That's what evil. They are. You yeah. Cast devil out of them. They're already there. That's yeah. What they are. They're the real devils. Exactly. Yes. Look on in verse 30. Because I think, you know, when it comes to binding devils today, doesn't the Bible talk about binding devils, binding adversaries? What do we need to do? We need to bind the IRS. We need to bind the politicians. We need to bind the Federal Reserve. We need to bind the real, these false educated interests and liars and deceivers and the media and, blah, and, and people like that, pharmacia. Wouldn't you love to see Hillary Clinton in jail? Wouldn't you love to see Bill Gates in jail? Wouldn't you love to see Fauci in jail? I could go on all day with these people and sorrows. Wouldn't you love to see them being bound and go to the right places? Verse 30. He that is not with me is against me, and, but he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. I ask again, do Real men gather with Christ. Hmm. That's a heavy question. Well, I would call you, no offense, Pelosi. <laughs> Just kidding. Real men. Real saints of God. And you gather with Christ. You produce with Christ. You plant seeds like Johnny Appleseed did. Amen? That's real fruit. Can real men scatter abroad, though, is the question. Do we see so-called devils gathered or scattered? Do we see real these invisible devils Gathered and scattered. Well, I've read about them. They're, they're, you know, they're legion. Boy, they, they just come in droves. Stuff like that. I went over that on my Satan series. Need to listen to that one. But no. We see real adversaries today, but they're real men doing real evil today that are spending lots of money against us today to achieve their causes and their purposes. We were scan, scammed by this vote, voter scam. That's how Biden and Harris got in there. We saw the theater and the theatrics and the false uh, production of his inauguration. And we're going to see a lot more of it. They've only just begun. They, are they, can we call the enemy communist? You bet we can. And a lot of other names. We could call them Talmudists. We could call them Zionists. We could call them evils. We could call them evil spirits. Causing real mayhem, real trouble and problems. Our adversary is not invisible but he's very real and tangible. I see them every day, and you do too as well. Our real fight is with very real people then. I, again, will call them adversaries or devils. People like Judas Iscariot. Was Judas Iscariot uh, real? Could we see him, what he did? Does the Bible talk about him being the treasurer and stealing funds and things like that? Would you, what would you call him? No, he was invisible. 
He was an invisible devil, and Jesus cast that devil out, and thank God we're rid of that devil. How about King Herod? All these various kings again, as I said last week. The king of Babylon, the king of Persia. How about Hillary again? Biden and Harris and Pelosi and Soros and, the, and Fauci and these different ones. Men who take pleasure in other people's pain, causing them torture, stealing uh, money from them, stealing their houses. Pe there are a lot of people, yes, that don't even know where they're going to get a paycheck to buy their next uh, group of groceries. Where's it going to come from? Isn't that happening today? And it, why is that happening? Hmm. I ask you, why? Do, you, do they think that uh, these Democrats and communists are going to give them more money? Well, I hate to say it, but they voted for them because that. Oh, remember way back when? We're going to get the free Obama whole, uh, the phone. They want that free education. They want this free everything, the free health. We don't have to. We don't want to have to worry about it. And we don't want to have to work for anything. By the way, if they get that, do you think you're going to have to work harder, and they're going to take more taxes out of you and they give it to these bums? Verse thirty-one. Therefore, I say to you, all manner of sin and blasphemy shall be forgiven unto men, but the blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven unto men. What might this be? Uh, you know, since we're reading here these verses here talk about um, sin and blasphemy, you know, most people, again, don't even know what that is. What a shame that is. They hardly know what sin and blasphemy is. Do you think if we were applying the principles, righteous principles against sin, what real sin is and going on today, and blasphemy, you think there will be a change in our nation? And you think if we would have kept us, the Israel people, together, there would be a lot less of that going on? When our, when our nation was founded, was more of this um, kept going? Yes, it was. Do you think the preachers back then preached God's word? Or did they go home and uh, click on, you know, I'm going to tune in to what the latest media says. No, that didn't happen. They didn't even have that. Their technology was the word of God. Do you, don't you wish our technology was the word of God? Amen. And so they went for an hour. Last week I preached for an hour and a half. I apologize. I went long on that. I didn't realize it. So I cut it up and I broke it up into uh, part two and part three for, uh, for the tape ministry. We have to do that because it needs to be about an hour long. But, uh, you know, nobody left. Nobody got tired of it. But a lot of times... They do. They Way back when, at the time of Paul, the, how long did they go on? Why, that was their main thing. They ate. They had fellowship. They, they ate God's word. And, we, and so we ought to be doing the same thing. We ought to be coming together for God's word. Not what the media is saying. But then the application of God's word. We don't have those numbers here and that strength here to necessarily do that. But don't all of these other churches, shouldn't they be, in a sense, coming out of Babylon? Uh, yeah, not just in a sense, they should be. They should be applying the principles of God's word, his law, to their lives, to their church, to their community, to their government. They should be voting according to what God's word says. The sin of denying the Lord Jesus Christ and his covenant, basically, that's what I think these verses are talking about. The 
Blasphemy against the Holy Ghost shall not be forgiven him. Amen? Let's not deny the Lord Jesus Christ in our life in any way, obviously. But let's not uh, deny his covenant. Let's, de let's not deny the principles of Christ. And this, by the way, does not apply to devils, these invisible devils, does it? They call them demons also. It applies to the heart and the mind of man. Right? Where's your heart? Let's not deny the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's not deny his blood. Verse 32. And whosoever speaketh a word against the Son of Man, it shall be forgiven him. But whosoever speaketh against the Holy Ghost, it shall not be forgiven him, neither in this world, neither in the world to come, neither either make the tree good. Listen to this now. I'm almost through. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt, and for the tree is known by his fruit. Again, that reminded me of Johnny Appleseed, planting a seed. But you know what you and I don't have control over today? The sun, the weather, amen, the water. We don't have, we have a certain amount of control over water, I understand. But most of these things, it's we plant the seed and let the Holy Spirit take over, over from there. And it may be, it's certainly not our timing, it may be his time. It may be six from, months from now, all of a sudden, boom, to this individual that you plant a seed with, because you planted that seed, wow, he all of a sudden understands a lot more than what he used to. And he would not have done that. That wouldn't have happened had you not have planted that seed, the Word of God. And the Word of God is the seed we are to be planting with people. Amen? Amen. It's just like, the other, I'll say it again. I went over to this uh, place to get coffee for my wife and I. Uh, I don't normally go there, but I did that day. And the guy says, hey, I like your trumpet, you know. And then we got the great conversation. He talked about the Vatican. And two older guys and a woman, they were our age. And he's, and he says, um, uh, I asked him, I said, at the end of it, I said, because I got a feeling, something just told, they know a lot. I said, are you guys um, Christian? He says, well, he says, no, because we can't find a church out there to agree with us or that we like these days. He was saying the church has been compromised, amen? And I said, uh, if I'm going to put this coffee up in my car and I want to grab a newsletter. I just printed the newsletter. And I said, you can burn it, you can stomp on it, you can throw it away. I pray you read it, but it may not, it may not be your cup of tea. But here is our latest newsletter. God bless you. And you know, they said, thank you, thank you, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's planting seeds, though. Amen. Yeah. That's planting seeds. Folks, I'm going to close today. Let go and let God have his way is basically it. Let go and let God have his way. So let's not take these demons, these burdens, around with us. I have to many times pray about things, not in front of y'all, but I just, God help me, God deliver me, you know, God give me a, the right mind and attitude, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And you know what? He does it. He really does it. I can tell you examples after examples. That Sometimes I do, you know, come in my office with a kind of a bad attitude, you know, over various things. Various things are perplexing me that I'm hearing about. I'm wondering, what is really going on there, you know? But I say, Lord, I'm going to put it in your hands. Give me understanding when you do. I'm going to get on with my life and my program. And he does that. All of a sudden, something popped into my mind. And, and said, so, this is the answer. I said, wow, I didn't even thought of that. Where'd that come from? Well, the Holy Spirit. All right. We're going to close part one out 
on this subject. I don't know if y'all anyone's mad at me or not, but uh, I hope not. <laughs> All right, Lord Jesus, we pray for this uh, sermon on evil spirits. We pray that it will produce the right fruit and questions and thoughts within the hearts and minds of people. And we want your word. We want to be guided by your Holy Spirit. We want to be led by your Holy Spirit. And your truth will set us free. Give us faith again. Give us amazing faith in your word. Joy in our heart that other people would just look at and say, I don't understand that. How can they have joy? It's because we have the joy of the Holy Spirit, the Lord Jesus Christ, our King, our Redeemer, in our heart. Amen.